If you've been enjoying the show, which I know you have, make sure you support the merch. We got long sleeve 38114 shirts. We got white. Come on, man. We got blue. We got red 38114 shirts. Each shirt, whatever color it is, it got the red specks in it. The blue got the blue specks in it. This is my favorite, the green. You know what I'm saying? Represent well. It has the green specks in it. Make sure you support the merch at 38114show.com. They are available in small and all the way up to 2X. And if you uh, want to continue to get your laugh on, uh, make sure you support my comedy special. Say it louder. It's on a one gigabyte USB drive. It's 35 minutes of stand-up on here and a 15-minute documentary. That's my son on the front. He's throwing up the fist. Name of the special called Say It Louder. I'm black and I'm proud. Love you, boy. Make sure you get that. I will autograph it for you. And make sure you support the Sea Moss and Bladder Rack Immortal Herbs. It's a tincture. Boucher Boucher Immune System. AIDS and Weight Loss. Boucher Libido. Immortal Herbs. Which also means Ambrose. Oh, man. That's clever right there, man. Sea Moss contains 92 of 101 minerals that your body needs. Bladder rack contains the other nine, both algaes. Both algae, sea moss and bladder rack is an algae that comes out the ocean. It's full of magnesium, iron, you know, stuff that your body needs. So make sure you take care of yourself. These are available at comedianambrose.com. Everything you guess, 38114show.com. Make sure you hit that subscribe button, turn that notification on. Shows dropping every Thursday. We might drop two. Thank you. Comedian Ambrose, I'm out, man. Shit. Hey y'all, just uh, another episode of the 38114 show. I'm comedian Ambrose, and uh, we got another special guest in the building. I've uh, been trying to get him up here for a while, uh, Mr. Chuck Chuck Hildreth. That's me. He, go, he got so many names, you know what I'm saying? So man, many... you know what? <laughs> You're you one of the first people I know that get that last name right properly. Hildreth. Man, That's a lot right. of people want to make it R E D Hildreth. Huge. But, but that tells you, 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 you somewhat articulate. Yes, I am very you, articulate. You know, Thank you, sir, for I, recognizing I, I give that. You that. <laughs> but you didn't see me on stage a lot of times. Absolutely. I take but, you with me. <laughs> this uh man, this is one of the guys who was uh, very instrumental in my uh, comedy career and a lot of our comedy career here in uh, Memphis, Tennessee, because he used to uh, set up shows for us. And tell us, hey, just go do them. <laughs> he don't even be there. He was like, hey, I need y'all to go to Holly Springs, go do the show. Everything already set up, money there, VIP, yep. everything. Yep. We would go do the show yep. and have no problem. What's up, man? Man, it's all good, man. You wanna, Let me tell you something, man. Uh, I have to say hats off, kudos to you. Yes, I sir. always love to, to support uh, my people in doing what they endeavors. I love to see our people growing. Yeah. Uh, as you know, I, I believe in our people, and I, I got to say I'm proud. That's how come it was It was necessary. We, we tried to get this a couple times. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm a little busy. I know you're a little busy, but we made it work because it's, it's my responsibility to come here and support okay. my people. Okay. Yeah, you always support support the youngins, the black people, man. Uh, where, where you get that from growing growing up? Well, first of all, this is a 3811 Fuss Show. You know, that's the zip code that I was raised in here in Memphis, Tennessee. Where where it started there for you, man? Where were you born and raised? Man, I was born in Chicago, Illinois. Hold on, hold on. See? Cook County Hospital. I didn't even know that. You born in Cook County Hospital? No, I'm sick. Nigga, no Watch as I talk about Chicago, Chuck. For, no, Ambrose, don't, 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 don't just be trying to, don't be trying to do I'm listen. Chicago bread, man. Was Cook County, Cook County 82. Was it still open? It was still Cook County, yes. Man, so, now look at that. See, you never been know. knowing this guy you all never these know. damn years, bro. I'm born in Cook. <laughs> look, really, I'm a thug that just transitioned. Hey, really, I tell you, <laughs> I'm a thug that transitioned. Hey, yeah, don't get it twisted. Though. Okay, so you, I think but I, I, I uh, heard of that briefly. Yeah, but. so so I was raised in Hot Springs, Arkansas. Okay. Now, now let me let me let me let me tell you something because I'm working on a new book uh, that. The area of Hot Springs, Arkansas, that you've been to a couple times, right. that I was raised in, was all black only. Oh. The, the, the neighborhood and environment that I was raised in, in Hot Springs, Arkansas, the 501 at the time, uh, the, 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 the restaurants, the barbershops, the doctors, the newspaper, the hotels. What year was this? All, man, this, this, now, I left uh, to go to college in the 80s. Uh, it started phasing out. Integration wasn't always good for everybody, but you know, I, I ain't got nothing to say about this whole thing. Like Orange Mound, yeah, kind of like the Orange it's, Mound it's area. Like, but 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 when I say this is historical, because uh, it's on the National Register for different things. Like for example, you know, like uh, here in Memphis, I can't remember the name of this 
this insurance company is down on uh, off Danny Thomas, and it, it, it was one of the first black-owned insurance companies, the national. Uh, but that in Hot Springs, that's all I knew wow. was black-owned. You know what I'm saying? I did not know that. So, so um, having said that, my tutelage, my mm -hmm. rearage mm -hmm. was different. I'm, I, I was raised to support black because that's what we did. Okay. So that's how come I do. You know, a lot of people ask me, well, man, you know, you always helping people. Some, if anybody called me for some information, as you know, you know, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm giving it. You right. know, I don't sell it. Right. I give it. Now, some things are for sale. My right. services are for sale. <laughs> but information, but knowledge. My information, you know, because it was, it was handed down to me or earned. Right. And that's how come I get it. So the answer to that is uh, I got into this because that's all I knew growing up. Wow. So what age did you leave Chicago? Three. Three years three, old. Three. And you came to Hot Springs? And there. this is booming black area. Bruh. Everything. Like Black Wall Street. Everything. Man, I did not know that. And I'm talking about, these weren't no little buildings, man. Uh, you know, they had the the uh, National Baptist Organization. You know, Baptist is big. You know, you got the Methodists. You right. got, they used to have the National Baptist meeting uh, every year down there up until the somewhat of the 80s. And uh, they had built their own hotel. You're talking about like a... 10 to 12 story hotel with ballrooms. I mean, it, it's still there. They black owned. Black owned. Man, you know, I did, that's history like that. right there on a 381 so, first show. I'm you, man. It, it, it's <laughs> and, uh, you know, like the restaurants and the, the community centers, even the community center, you know, like they had, you have the YMCA all over the, the United States. Well, they had what's called the Web Center, still there now. Mm -hmm. uh, had f tennis courts, basketball courts, and swimming pool. Okay. Black owned in a black neighborhood. Wow, so that's what they don't know. So you was in college. What college did you go to? Arkansas State University. Arkansas Jonesboro. State University, right after uh, High Springs, mm -hmm. you mm -hmm. completed that's school. That's how I learned about Memphis. Oh, okay. Yeah, so so uh, I was a DJ. Okay, did not know that. Okay, I was a DJ. Did not been knowing this guy and, for and, uh, 15 years, and I know he was a DJ. So I was a D that's how I got into the shows. I, I transitioned from DJing, people paying me. To doing my own shows where I paid people. Okay. Okay. There you go. But uh, entrepreneur. So right check there. out what I used to do. I used to come over to Memphis to buy my music. Okay. Pop tunes, Boss Ugly Boss. Boss Ugly Boss on okay. Macklemo. <laughs> That's what where we used to get so, all the tapes set. So, so the original <laughs> pop tune. I don't know if it was the original, but it was out on Poplar yep. and uh, uh, Danny Thomas. Yeah. Uh, and that's where I used to go to those two locations. I'm the only place I knew. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, I wasn't fin finna be hanging out in Memphis trying to do the wrong thing. You wind up in the wrong neighborhood. Right. Okay. But that's why how I got acclimated to Memphis. And uh, back then they had a club called uh, 2001 yeah. Downtown. I remember 2001. I used to come over there and hang out. And uh, when I uh, graduated from college and went to the service, the Navy, became a recruiter in Jackson, Tennessee. Didn't go far. Hold on. What you major in in college? Communication. And you, uh, you journalism. graduated, got your degree yeah. and everything. Journalism. Yeah. Okay. And journalism. Mm -hmm. Man. I, that's how, again. All of this. Look at this. All this transition from DJ. You know, my mama was school teacher, uh, and you know, just just. So you transition. know how to write, then. You a writer. Uh, I got a book out. Remember, I got the damn yeah. books. Man, love you know? that book too. Uh, love you got that book. one right. Don't get into that. Love that book. Me okay. and my son. My son, I love that book. Yeah. Man. So so I got, I got the book, and then I wrote a play called Lord, I Need You. Uh, it's on DVD as well. Probably, I, I had to give you one of those. So uh, you know, again, like like both, we we're a little articulate. You know, we yeah, we yeah, don't yeah. just talk. I didn't even talk. know we, this we stuff, the, man. It's all DJ and all the info today. DJ and the cop. <laughs> It, it got a degree in journalism. Mm -hmm. He's a writer and communicator. Well, you know how to communicate. Yeah, you know how to run that mouth, folks, baby. Folks know I know that. <laughs> I got no problem Very well. That. So after college, what made you go to the Navy? You got your degree and everything. What made you say, hey, you I want to go? pay for it. Oh. Okay. <laughs> got to pay for college. Okay. You know what I'm saying? And then I come from a single parent, my mom. Uh, and then my sister was in college. She, we're three years apart, so she was right behind me. And, you know, that my mom was just a school teacher. Had a good living. I didn't know I was lower middle class or middle class, uh, but at the end of the day, you know, I, I was out to take care of my responsibilities, and one of the best things happened to me. Yeah. Uh, I'm not sure where I would have been without the Navy, but uh, allowed and afforded me some great opportunities. Travel the world. Travel the world, and then, um, you know, that's where I met my wife, and um, was able to change some other people's lives, some young people who, who uh, wasn't quite sure what direction that they wanted to take and I knew what the Navy had done for me. 
Okay. okay. So it was a good experience for you. Good experience. So, so you, you went to school first, then went to the Navy? Mm -hmm. I thought most folks go to the Navy first and then let the school, let the Navy pay for the school, but you went afterwards? I did let it pay for it. I paid for it after because you got them them student loans. Oh, okay. <laughs> so you just did it. Yeah. Okay, did yeah. exactly. How long you served in the Navy? Eight years. So you're an arm, you're a vet too. Is that considered I'm, a vet? I'm a vet. I'm a vet. I'm a member of the Navy Federal Credit Union, USAA. I'm a vet. This guy do a lot of things, and we ain't <laughs> even got into all the other stuff that he do. So after the day, where you meet your wife at? Jackson, Tennessee. Jackson, Tennessee. Y'all was in the Navy? No, no, no. My my, my wife's a doctor. She's in the medical field. Uh, she was uh, doing her in, her intern up there at uh, Jackson General uh -huh. uh, in physical therapy, and uh, I met her there. Well, uh, after I started, you know, I got done with all that running around. I had to do a whole lot of running, running around, around first. Yeah. Running around, first. Yeah, I know. First. First. You did a lot of running around. You did a lot of running around. That's what they call Running around. Yeah, running around. Before you got married. That's how you're supposed to do it. Slow down. That's how you're supposed to do it, man. Slow down. So uh, when you was booking shows for us, that's when you was in your promoter stage. I'm still in the promotion. Well, you still, yeah, you right, still right. put shows I'm, I'm, on. I'm, I'm, but you was heavy into it then. Yeah. Well, here's the difference. There was a level that I did then, and the level that I do now mm -hmm. is I don't do them as often, but mm -hmm. they're a little bit bigger. Okay. You see what I'm saying? Okay. You know, so so I consider myself. And then uh, when I became, you know, at that time I might have had just one business, and then I could do shows. Now I have several businesses, so. and I do shows and and. Uh, and I'll tell you something that I try to do, like like people contact me like Bo. Mm -hmm. you know? And I make sure that they got the right contacts. You know, but before Pope got with with uh with Kerwin, Kerwin, I made sure he had what he had. And then, you know, I just talked with D Sorrell the other day. Uh he'll contact me. They open up you know, a club. So what what happened, yeah, he can ready he can ready to open up mm -hmm. two, uh, 20, 21. And so what happens is entertainers and promoters, whether they be uh, vets or new into it, if they would link with me, I, I make sure that they got what they need. And, um, and that, that also, what people don't realize, so let's say, for example, uh, Jackson, Tennessee, you, you, you got Bo. Uh, me making sure that Bo has what he needs, then in, in turn, these people, whenever I need something, they're able to reciprocate. Okay. You know, uh, and me and Pope, you know, with Kerwin, go back to when he first got started. Okay, yeah, yeah. both. I'm real good with both. Okay. Uh, Kurt, I had Kurt, Kurt went up here to do the show. You had him Big internet there? sensation, yeah? Yeah, that, yeah, that, yeah. Well, I mean, I just tell you the level that you, you so, know. <laughs> so, you know, that come from relationship building, too, throughout the years. So I didn't know when we used to do them shows in Hot Spring, that was your hometown. It was my hometown. They didn't even know that. Man, let me, let me tell you something. I don't know if uh, Lomax or, or, or Cuz, tell you, man, we used to pull up in there when I was doing them shows. People behind they. They were not aware that I was from Hot Springs mm -hmm. and, and the the, the uh, connection, and uh, you know some of them was was they was thought they was coming to something little, right? And man, they treated them guys like stars. I'm talking about. Uh, I took uh, a couple of white boys down there with me too, mm -hmm. and so what you need to do is sometime ask uh, Lomax what happened when we took the white boy down there, um, <laughs> and the white boy. In, in a foreign city, uh, in a black neighborhood, thought he was that cool where he just took off walking down looking for stuff in the middle of the night. Now, luckily, <laughs> we were in a decent neighborhood. <laughs> and people knew, you know, knew it, but uh, knew of him. They, man, you here with Chuck and them, but they, they treat us real good whenever we do shows. Oh, for real? Down there. Yeah, I always have a good time to go to Hot Springs. Yeah. So, uh, Did I let you stay on the lake? Did you stay on the lake? With no, you? I, uh, no, we gotta do no, that. no, no. We got to do that. Yeah. No. So, uh, so after a college, you go to the Navy, mm -hmm. and then when you went entrepreneurship, when that hit you, well, you was already an entrepreneur. Bro. Exactly. Now, you know what? I'll tell you what you just said. Uh, toward the time when I was a, knew I was going to get out, because I, once I got married, I started my first official business. Now, we, we always got a business. Man. We hustling, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> so my, my first business was cutting yards when I was a shorty. My mama bought me a lawnmower to cut our yard. Mm -hmm. And my entrepreneurial spirit, I'm cutting other folks' yards getting go. paid. There you know you what I'm saying? I got this lawnmower. There I'm going to make it work for me now. But I'm going to got to do this for free. Now I'm going to get everybody make some money, right? <laughs> that, that was the start of, of business. Okay, for, okay? for you. 
this learning, because you know you have to have a, what I call a gestation period, where you learn the business before you do. Hold on, let me business. tell you what we're mine. In high school, me and a couple of partners, my boy Lonnie Ford, Terrell West, we had our business license in the twelfth grade. See, selling cell phones and beepers and stuff like that. Just beepers. I, I know they weren't you, but I'm saying that's right. I, 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 we had our business. But see, that's the thing. <laughs> now, now, tell you about a, a, a book. I got two books that before you do anything. Plan it out. Mm -hmm. That's what, you know, a lot of times we jump into stuff, ain't planned it out. Next ain't thing you know, no you, you're, in the middle, you're in the middle of the water. <laughs> don't know how to swim. You ain't got no raft. You know, you're just out there. You're like, man, I'm going to jump in that water. But you ain't figured the rest of it out. So right. the two books I'm working on right now. Now, I already got the one, Daddy Books. It's on Amazon. Uh, it was on the bestsellers list for children's books for a little while. But that was yeah, years ago. It's called Daddy's Book on Amazon. You Look got up, one. I got one. That's you got one. one. My son and our favorite book. Uh... Well, what is that? Uh, Chuck Hildreth? You it's can look it Flinoy. up. It's under Flanoy Hildreth. Flanoy Hildreth. That's another one of his names. Is that your middle name, Flanoy? <laughs> that, that is my middle name. Flanoy Hildreth. Don't, man, don't put that out there, too. Man. Okay. Yeah. Uh, they gonna, you want them to look for the book on Amazon, <laughs> don't it? Daddy's yeah. book on yeah. Amazon. We're going to put the link on the uh, yeah, yeah, YouTube page. And then you're working on another one? So I'm working on two books. So uh, the, the damn, I got an idea for three books. But, so right now, I'm, I'm in the note phase. Mm -hmm. You got to start writing your notes. Write your notes okay. down. So uh, the first book is called The Black Book. Mm -hmm. The Black Book is how black people start and run a business. Okay. Okay. All right. uh, from a minority uh, standpoint, because uh, I don't know if you've been in my organization, but you know we have this black organization called the Minority Entrepreneurs. Didn't it's, even know that. It's all black entrepreneurs. You got uh, uh, Progressive Realty, Leah uh, Wooten. You got Amanda Avery. Avery. Hold Admiral. on. Is these these events y'all do every year? Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah I do that. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So that's what that is. Mm -hmm. It's called the Minority Entrepreneurs, and that's nothing but it's a small black expo that we used to do every month, but now we do it quarterly. Right now, we can't do it at all because of that, because of this mask. Right. You know right, what I'm right. saying? But we, we will be back. Soon as it Soon as the world open up, y'all gonna start back. We're coming back. So, so a lot of people will ask me uh, about different things. Hey, man, how do you get started with this? So, and I might either I, I know or somebody I know knows. So, what I'm gonna do with the black book is just create a step-by-step -step guide. Business license. How do you get a business license? Mm -hmm. What do you do about your taxes? Your tax ID, uh, things like that. And it, it'll cover general fields. Okay, it's going to cover some in real estate because I deal with real estate through my yep. construction company. We're going to get into that. You know, uh, and things like that. So it uh, talks about bank accounts, the different type of bank accounts, uh, the different types of licenses even. So okay. it's going to be a general okay. guide For to start a black book. minority business owner. Right. Okay. The next book uh, is going to be about Hot Springs, the black neighborhood, oh, wow. that, that whole thing because it's history. It's, you know, it's on the historical registry, but people like you don't know. I mean, I the world even, needs to know, know that, about this black. And when I tell you, bro, I'm talking about everything that do you have here, mm -hmm. the uh, 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 clothing stores, the barbershops, the, 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 and, my, and I'm talking about in a five-mile radius on Pleasant Street, Garden Street, Gulf, all of these were black, the liquor stores, mm -hmm. the pool halls. The nightclubs. And, and what messed that up? Integration. I, I believe uh, I was gone when it, when, it, when it came, but I could see the beginning of it. Uh, integration, because what happened is people started thinking they're moving on up, they moved on out, yeah. and they were not reinvesting in their own neighborhood. Okay, you know what, uh, Dr. Claude Anderson, I uh, so watched a lot of his interviews, you know, you, you know Dr. Claude Anderson, I don't know no, if you, but, I'm up but he's been in the uh, government for 20 years, and uh, he said that messed that up, messed yeah. that up, because uh, where he was from in North Carolina, they had their own uh, black uh, owned business, mm -hmm. uh, bus, bus line, mm -hmm. but when integration happened, mm -hmm. all the black people want to go get, sit with the white folk uh, on their, and look, it, my, my yeah. grandfather on the black, Cab. He had one cab, but I call it, I call it a cab thing. It's a he, cab company. He was, but he, had, he owned one cab, uh, and then there were others who I knew that owned. Now they didn't own cab companies, mm -hmm. but like for example, Ambrose might, he got a cab. So when people back then, before Uber and, and they were not allowed on the buses, okay, okay right, and all that, mm -hmm. and 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 you couldn't call a white taxi cab 
company to come to the neighborhood to take you nowhere. You had to call one of them. So you might have had four or five black people who had their own cabs. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that was a company. They were running their own little business, in, per se, before if, they even knew if it. If one couldn't make it, they'd call. Yeah, so they, they would call who they knew. Mm -hmm. So those are type things that, that went on back then. And I think that the, now that we're talking about it, and Dr. Anderson, the same thing, is that once we... Um, start thinking we got it going on, that we, can we forgot where we came with them from. And stop putting saying? the money back in our you're own. Not recirculating that money and recycling mm -hmm. it, not realizing that you're taking from someone or somebody. You know, like, like it, uh, you know, I always employ young men who ask me for a job. I'll find a job for them, something right. like that, in one of the different companies or whatever I do. And what happens is once they stop seeing people like themselves who have businesses and running businesses, then they lose the sight. They mm. think they got to look elsewhere. The only people they see in the hood is hustlers. Right. Okay? Mm -hmm. So that's how come they become hustlers because that's all they see who making money, but they don't see people like you and I and, and other people black owned okay. because those people have taken their business elsewhere. and call themselves moving on out. Right. And you're taking from somebody who would have mentored, you would have been a mentor right. to. That's, what, that's one thing I'm conscious about, make sure I keep my black dollars circulating in black owned businesses, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? This whole building owned by a black owned guy. I didn't know, you know that. I, I know several people who bring it from here. Yeah, Patrick Newman. Yeah, that, yeah that's yeah. good. And, it, and this has been here for a while. Right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, so, uh, the first, uh, first business was cutting yard. Second business First, first business was cutting yards. Uh, second business was DJing. Uh, so what happened in high school, you go to Hot Springs and, and, and ask, I ask people who about, about my age about Disco Chuck. Disco Chuck. <laughs> Disco Chuck. Disco Chuck. And uh, so what happened was Disco Chuck was, uh, was a DJ doing parties for other people until uh, about the 11th grade. Started doing my own party. Stopped letting okay. people. I, I would still let people hire me up when I, I went up on the race. Right. But I would let people hire me out. And then I uh, started doing my own shows. I had this guy, partner of mine. I don't know. You met Lafayette, I think, because... We did shows together. So Lafayette was a black guy, the only black guy in Hot Springs that was a black belt in, in Taekwondo, Judo, oh. and Karate. Yeah, so yeah. wasn't nobody messing with him. He's your security, so, too. That's so he was my security. <laughs> but since he was a couple years older than me, we started doing parties and shows together. He, he held the door. I held the, uh, the, uh, the DJing down. Mm -hmm. And so what wound up happening, I'm going to show you a picture that's going to act on the really kind of get you there. So what wound up happening is we started doing our own shows from there. Now here's what's going to kind of mess you up. I'm, he and I have done Ice Cube, Two Short, Spice One. Well, y'all bringing them at here? We were doing them in Hot Springs and Pine Bluff, Arkansas. Wow. What uh, years we is did it? Snoop Dogg all the way from the 90s. All the, Our last show we did together was maybe 98. Oh, y'all big money. Yeah, I mean, we did Ice Cube, Ice Cube too, too Short, short UGK, Snoop Dogg. Uh, I've got a lot of these pictures and videos. So, uh, you know, that, that's, that's the kind of stuff we did back then. And, you know, so that's back in my disco Chuck days, DJ and rocking the money. Yeah, the Jerry girl. Yeah, I did. So, <laughs> so you know, again, every, every, you'll always find where somebody got their start. Okay. All right, so the next company was the... Uh, so you, you do think, do you think them guys still know you? Snoop Dogg, uh, look at Jerry Curl. Do you think them guys still know you? Oh, uh, no, no. You think they still remember you from bringing them down to the south, the no. dirty south? The last thing that we did here, <laughs> me, and, me and Lafayette bought Billy Blanks here in 98. Mm -hmm. uh, well, that ain't the last thing I did. I bought, uh, I bought uh, Luke and two live crew here to old oh, Denim and Dime. Not Denim and Dime, uh, uh, club downtown, Evident Ivory. Okay. You remember hearing that club? Yeah, I so remember we did, that. We, thought we did that. So, okay, so you graduated from from doing parties to doing your own show. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, so then came college, and I was DJing on campus and, and around the city uh, when I went to the Navy. Uh, so my first business while I was in the Navy, uh, I started a security an investigation Lord company. Lord have mercy. In the Navy. Is mm -hmm. that even why, legal? Why, well, I don't know, but I was getting out anyway. <laughs> <laughs> what are you going to do? Kick me out? I'm leaving. Right, right, All right. right. So, so the reason I did that, now check this out. Here's the why you got a plan. 
So I'm in the Navy mm -hmm. with security clearances and all of this stuff, right? Right. I'm looking to start a security and investigation company when I get out. Why was that? Why was that important? Because I, I needed security to do my shows. See, like uh, when, when um, um, uh, Shaq came to Memphis, my company was one of the companies that, that did the security for me. Okay. When uh, uh, Montel Jordan came to Memphis, my company was one of the companies that did it. Then I also was doing investigation. I did an investigation for Roadway Trucking Company. Mm -hmm. I did an uh, investigation for American Freightway. These are, you know, I was doing other little small stuff. Right. But I'm saying, we're talking about corporate big, stuff. Big you know what I'm saying? Those are the ones that pay the bill. So the reason that I did this while I was in, because while I was in the Navy, my, all the people had to do to get my security company, um, security clearance, is make one call. Okay. So, like, if, like now to get all of that, they got to go through this red tape. Okay. All right. So you was the check-in guy. Like when somebody come in town, you be like, hey, man, you got to check in. You come to me. Uh, <laughs> okay, so check this out. I'm, I'm gonna tell you, so, so, so from the security, once I got out, mm -hmm. I was doing security and investigation, but I started doing something that was so much more interesting, and, and very few people know this. Uh, I started doing federal transportation. We would transport prisoners. So let's say, for instance, you had a warrant. <laughs> this man got so many days. I, I ain't got it now. But, <laughs> I but, mean, you had yeah, some. Well, I'm, I'm going to tell you why. I'm, I'm going to give you that in a minute because okay. this, this is important about that mindset. So what we used to do is if you had a warrant, if you got picked up in Memphis mm -hmm. and had a warrant in uh, Houston or Dallas or someplace else, any place else, uh, in order for you to get federally extradited, they had to go through all this stuff, and you had, you would be on hold here mm -hmm. until they decided to come pick you up. Now you could have been ha ha uh, exercised from your current charge, right. but you sitting here waiting for them to come get you. Mm -hmm. I had a contract uh, with with Diagnostic. I don't even know if all of this goes on now, but so very few companies had it. I was the only black in this area. Okay. And all because I had that, I, I had had that military background clearance. Okay. All right. So some of the clearance that, like, that I got then, I don't even know if I could have gotten it. Okay. If you I, if I was a civilian. Okay. All right. So what wound up happening? We we would transport prisoners, come pick them up here and take them where they used to go. And you know, my fee was like uh, something something a mile. So wherever we picked them up, it was one fee to pick them up, and then something something a mile. Okay. You see what I'm saying? So it worked out like that. And I had had other guys that worked, it was my company, and then you had to have a certain license. So at that time, I could carry my firearm on planes from city to, you know, most people, your, your weapons uh, uh, license has a jurisdiction, okay. Shelby County, right. stuff like that. So, so that's one of the things I did. Uh, okay, so when the construction business comes, hold on, first of all, did you ever work a job? Besides the I, Navy? I have worked a job. Okay. A, let, let, let me tell you what my <laughs> philosophy was about that. <laughs> My philosophy for, for working a job is I worked a job until I got my, uh, my other business up and going. So you use the money from your job to pay for your own business. So don't quit your job and start your business you until go. you got your stuff in order. Mm -hmm. Okay. For example, I'll give you just two particular places. Hold on. Right. Don't do it like me. When I started doing company, He just quit. I just quit UPS. <laughs> well, I got fired. That's because I was doing stuff to get fired. <laughs> yeah, it just yeah, went cold turkey. But I could have used that money. To fun, use all that money, I was getting paid twenty-three dollars out to get my stuff. Yeah, okay, yeah. that would have been smart. But but, you know, but I'm hey. saying, reason for it <laughs> is you need to have some degree of income to sustain yourself. Yes, you do. Because you, if you out there trying to do it all off of that, there's a lot of pressure on you. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So he, he can tell you how that go. So and then, uh, man, it's, it's true. Me and my wife just had this a similar conversation last night. I used to go to work with the mindset of I really don't care. Because I always had some money coming in from my show. I was there for a, only a certain amount of time. For example, I worked at MCI. Anybody just Man, that's at MCI. throwback. That's the phone yeah. company. So I worked for, for MCI for one year. Okay. And that one year working at MCI was just because me and Prescott was here to open up another spot. We had had a spot before called The Funny Man years ago. And so... Was that there? No, no, no. It hadn't come about yet. Let me, let me go back. Let me go back. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, Prescott and I was on show, doing shows. Uh, but I worked at MCI because we were facilitating our shows, but we was working on opening up a Crumpies. Okay. Okay. In Jackson, Tennessee. 
and I we needed money. He you know he was on the radio and I was doing this and so that's sort of what. And then what, when when we was get ready to open up our stuff, I took a leave of absence. Mm -hmm. I didn't quit. Okay. Reason being, I didn't know if this was gonna work. I might gotta go back. Right. <laughs> might gotta go back. So and uh, I know you get a lot of history of stuff. Did you end up going back? Never. Never. There Never. you go. You know, <laughs> Crumpy's, uh, Crumpy's was open from 95 to 2000. Uh -huh. we, left, we left Crumpy's in 2000, and we opened up uh, Ch Funny Man in 2001. Crazy thing about Funny Man Prescott, uh, y'all, that was the comedy club mm -hmm, also, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm. And Hot I, Wings. I was working at UPS at the time, just before I even thought about doing comedy. I remember I'm riding down Mendenhall. Mount Moriah. Mount Moriah, because yeah, yeah. it's right there on uh, Night Honor, right? Mm -hmm. Night, Night Honor. I Night remember. Night. Specifically, hearing the ad on the radio, funny man, Prescott Hot Wings, company club, we got so and so, so and so coming. And I, I, I had a thought of my, I need to go check that out, but I never did. You had never so been comedy I at have, that point? I wasn't doing it. I didn't start to 07. Okay. I'm saying I heard this on the radio, yeah. and some told man, just go check out the show. I need to go check that out, and I never did. So I never did get a chance to go to Funny Man Prescott. Okay, okay. Well, one thing about did. it, you you show check, <laughs> everything out now. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. Uh, all right. So we're in the construction business uh, here. When all right. So, start? remember I told you about those black businesses in Hot Springs? There we go. My uncle had a construction company called Pasco Construction. And he was doing it big. He was building houses. He was building co uh, commercial buildings as well as uh, uh, residential. Mm -hmm. uh, he built a rest area. He had real contracts. Now, nothing like what I'm doing. I'm, bo I'm baby boy out here. Okay. Uh, but I did have the pleasure and benefit of working for him. Okay. And now, when I worked for him, that wasn't in my future. What I was not trying to be in construction. That's hard work right there. Look, I'm, I'm trying to be a DJ. Okay. But... <laughs> As, as fate would have it. You got experience. I got the experience. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, my, my uncle passed 90-something. Um, I can't remember, 98, let's just say something like that. So nobody, he had sons, and nobody took up the business. So you got the same name for yours right now, too. You just took this name. Okay. So, so what happened was I started, before I started the construction company, I had a tax company. Me and, me and some partners, we had some tax companies. <laughs> but because I didn't do the taxes, it was just my business, okay. uh, people would call me because they knew I knew how to fix stuff. Mm -hmm. So different pe friends of mine would call me and say, hey, Chuck, man, I got this going. Can you do I'd come over, I had to paint something, fix something, because I had that kind of time. That was after I left uh, American Home Shield. Uh, 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 not American Home Shield. Uh, uh, what was that company I was working for? MCI? No, no MCI had been gone. Uh, service Master. I was working for Service Master. Okay. okay. So uh, I had worked for Service Master for three years, and I was doing shows at one of the shows that y'all did. I used to do shows down at this place called uh, Juicy Jim's uh, Pizza Place on Highland. I don't mm -hmm. know if you ever did that, but, mm -hmm. but uh, Rob, one of the first shows, Rob Love and uh, Cassell, he, he did. Cassell, with, yeah, 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 back there. Um, so the construction came by. I was doing a lot of odds and end jobs for people. And I started this little small company called Community Clinic. Uh, we did a little landscaping, as you mentioned, mm -hmm. very little. Um, but I did, you know, small, minor construction handyman work. And it kept growing. And it kept growing. And it kept growing. And some of my family members said, hey, you need to change your name to our uncle, you know, my uncle's company because now you're doing construction. And I was like, no, nah, I'm not worthy. Uh, so my cousin who passed, Dr. Carroll, who was at UAPB, who was like my sister, she told me, you're ready. And if you're not ready, you'll get ready. There you go. And so that's what I wound up. Uh, Switching the name. Changing the name. Pasco. Pasco Construction. Construction. Got incorporated. Uh, and and, and uh, they have this saying, if you build it, they'll come. I mm. uh, Have them something to come to. I, I, had to <laughs> I had to step my game up. Right. And so now, as you know, I'm doing stuff at the casino, you know, all over the city and what have you, uh, because I had to step up to that. You know, we're doing apartment buildings. Uh, we're doing everything. We, we're doing everything. We, we, everything we build. I do additions. Paint. Painting, sheetrock. Floors. Floors, everything. roofing, uh, plumbing, electrical. Everything except new build. I won't, you know, I'm not, I'm not ready. You see what I'm saying? So okay. I, don't, I won't do nothing I'm not ready for. Okay. Yeah. Before you get into your other business, uh, one of my favorite, favorite shows got to be the Kings of Comedy at Fitzgerald Casino. This is an annual show that they have every year. Now, wait, wait. 
Memphis Kings. Are Memphis coming. Kings are coming. That's right. Yeah, yeah, so uh, tell it like it is. This is a show annually comedy show slash uh, a R and B artist. And uh, I think the first year we did it with me, Prescott, Tony Tone, no, Tony Tony, Tony Cook. No, 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 Tony Tone wasn't on the show. He he, he Bogart is on the he, show. That's right, he did because he's a stage hall. But it was just no, Prescott, <laughs> you, me, Cubs, Mike Lomax. Now Lomax, Cubs. Lomax did second. Okay, man, I don't mean. Yeah, the first one it was just me, cuz uh, and Tony Tone came. Yeah, Tony and Tone the, came, and, and Mary Jane Girls was the R and B act. That was the first one. That was the first one, man. First one. That, yeah, man, yeah, we have a good hey, time at listen, them shows. But that, that actually wasn't the first. Prior to that, we used to do the uh, Memphis Kings of Comedy uh, at Chuckles. We outgrew. Okay. We outgrew it. Okay, so what wound up happening? I remember y'all started doing it. We, at we were doing it at Chuckles. Uh, now the way that went, growth. Everything has to have a growth. So we were doing the shows at Chuckles, and we were using local uh, uh, singers. You know, with like like uh, we had. Uh, uh, dang, what's my guy? He gonna be mad. I don't know his name. Um, Name, name a, 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 a singing group here. Devin Crutcher. Devin Crutcher. Yeah, we had Devin, Devin Crutcher. Crutcher. We had uh, uh, Karen Karen Brown, I think that's her name. Different local singers with the comedians. Right. So we would bring in comedians like Bo Peep. We bought Bo Peep in. We brought uh, Chocolate in. She was going on her real name. Uh, uh -huh. now. But so so we made the, the uh, comics uh, the feature and the local talent singers. right okay. okay so that was called jazz and jokes okay that's right okay. jazz and jokes that, that was, was first that before was first. memphis kings so comedy. what wound up happening one day i was just sitting down and came up with this idea of all of you guys because memphis has a, some of the funniest memphis has a great <laughs> bed of comedians mm -hmm. okay so uh you know, me and Prescott had been talking, and Prescott had been part of the original Kings of Comedy. He opened up for him. He wasn't the Kings of Comedy, but he opened up for him. So, and if people know Prescott, his comedy, then you had Tony Tone's comedy, you had Ambrose comedy, yeah. uh, and I, I said, man, we got our own Kings of Comedy. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's when I came up with the Memphis Kings of Comedy. I, I pitched it to this young lady. You, you always need to kind of pitch something off of somebody, see what they think, you know, get some ideas. And everybody I talked to was like, man, that's hot. And I mentioned, you know, some of the names, you know, Lomax, Cuz, you, and Prescott, you know, always start with, with the, the original right. uh, OGs. Right. You got to always pay respect to the original OGs when you come out with Lester Bibbs, mm -hmm. Prescott, and, 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 and uh, from there. Um, and so that's when I came up with the Memphis Kings of Comedy. And so uh, when I, Chuckles' show, we were doing the... Uh, Jazz and Jokes, Fitzgerald's was one of our sponsors. Right, I okay. remember that. And uh, me and the, one of the, 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 the managers down there, Keydron, shout Keydron, out to Keydron. Shout he, out to Keydron. He, he, he always take care of everything we yep. need. <laughs> uh, he was like, man, you know, we, 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 we started packing out Chuckles. And he said, man, you know, I think I can pitch this to, to uh, the casino to bring down in. Man. And uh, our... First show at the casino might have been 2015, I think. Yeah, I, I think, think in know, April. I think no, it was April? No, we, the first one was in January. Okay. No, no, April. You're right, April. you're right. I take that back because they're always in April. I take that back. Right, my, right, right, my, right. I, we, we, we start talking about it. <laughs> yeah. you, you're right, man. Good, good, good. Yeah. Ears, man. So uh, now our, our Memphis Kings of Comedy show at Chuckles is always the night before they do Crawfish and Corvettes. Mm -hmm. So that's what you, you saw. Oh, okay, right, 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 uh, right, right, right. So right. we're that Friday before that. Uh, so y'all just moved into the casino. Yeah. Now, right. here, here's what happened, man. So originally, we were set up for between four, 450 and 500 people. And that was the first year. Packed it out, sold it out. Yep. The next years after that, they had to open up the old auditorium to uh, give us between and Everybody was looking forward to their next show, man. man. And, uh, we came back, did it, was it again. Rocky, man. First time we had Mary Jane Girl. Second year we did, we had uh, Case. Case. Yeah. Yeah. And then. Then uh, I think y'all switched the lineup for the third year, right? Uh, did, or did y'all even make it to the third year before? 
COVID. Yeah. No, we now the last show we did. Because I wasn't on that. Y'all the switched last the show we did. Which I went, I didn't approve of that. I thought <laughs> they should have kept the original lineup because no, everybody you gotta change was looking up forward sometimes. to see us every year. You gotta but, okay. change up sometimes. <laughs> but the last show we did was with Howard Hewitt. Okay. Who was on that one? I was on that one. Yeah. But y'all did it again with Oscar and we, somebody we, we, else. Did. Yeah, we y'all did. Didn't, y'all yeah, didn't. we did. Who? Dang, man. What R&B act y'all had with them? Because I did Mary Jane Girls, Case, and I did How We Hear It. You can't do no more, dude. I can't do <laughs> Man, I'm the man. Everybody, <laughs> where Ambrose yeah, is? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you know what? When you consist... Now, the, the thing did, about I'm that... I'm changing my jokes up every I was time. Ju- so man, it, ain't like, it ain't like they're hearing the same I was joke. just getting ready to say that. Listen, comedians. <laughs> to, to the comedians out there. <laughs> to the ones that come to Chuckles every week. Mm-hmm. Chuckles is a good place, or 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 a vivacious spot, uh, a comedy junk. Comedy junk. Wherever you go, that's a good place for you to try new stuff. Mm-hmm. You can't come to the same facility yeah, doing the doing same the jokes. Same joke. See what I'm saying? Because because <laughs> people will come in like, uh, you yeah. know what I'm saying. So that was one of the reasons. I, you need to have some new material. Right. You can incorporate old material but make with sure new you material. Have, yeah. You got to have something. Yeah. Thank you. Thank yeah, you. no problem, Thank man. You, you know, I take, I, take, I, take, I take this crap very seriously. Now, you know what? Like, let me tell you what. <laughs> I've had mm. club owners, other promoters, and DJs to tell me, man, hey, Chuck, we're not going to do so-and-so no more because they keep doing the same stuff. Mm-hmm. Now, you, cuz, mm-hmm. Prescott, I, 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 I can't, you know, I can't think of everybody, but I'm just talking. These are people who I know for a fact right. have different, different show, you know, that can kind of, kind of uh, change it up. Now, Oscar, on the other hand, right. he freelance and he be cutting up. Right, you know, right, sometimes right, we right. have to bring real him back in. <laughs> you know, he, he, he freestyle like he got, man, he got a great routine. <laughs> but when he go. Uh, uh, entre, you know, uncut, mm-hmm. uh, you know, freestyle. Yeah. <laughs> he gets, man, I took him to a, 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 a church show, and we had to remind him, this ain't the club. <laughs> you own the church show. <laughs> <laughs> Which is the next thing we do. You know, we, we have our... Uh, yeah, do clean shows we also, do our clean man. Shows, so so. Uh, this is the thing, man, that I want to pitch to you on this show here. Uh, you know, we always did the, the Kings of Comedy shows, you know, at Chuckles and at the casino. We ready for this tour. Well, we're working on that. We, yeah. before, listen, before... We're ready for the nationwide King, Memphis Kings of Comedy Tour. And if we want somebody behind it, Chuck got to be behind. So so there are two shows, tours that we were working on uh, before COVID. I, I had, you know... Oh, okay. You had, had this in the works. We ain't heard about it yet. Yeah. Okay. Well, yeah. <laughs> see, see, let me tell you something about it. Let me tell you something, Ambrose. Okay, y'all were brainstorming. Let me tell you something, people out there. Okay. Uh, <laughs> hold your ideas close until you're ready. Okay? okay, because you'll mess you around and, and pit something out there, and the right person get a hold to it, mm-hmm. they gone, and it ain't yours no more. Okay. All right? It's kind of like a, a joke you threw out there, you know, you just started, and then next thing you know, a comedian, you hear it somewhere else, and like, hey, man, I didn't do somebody else doing stuff. Right. So when you're in the planning stages, be very careful who, or who you reveal your okay. information Okay, so we ain't going to reveal it. Just go mm-hmm. on, keep on working well, well, on well, that well, for 2021. Well, you know, I, I own the name Memphis Kings of Crime, okay. so I ain't worried about that. Okay. And then uh, we also got uh, Almost Famous. So there are two tours that we were working on. Prescott's Almost Famous, and that was going to be like people like J.J., Henry Welch, you different ones who have been on other people's okay. tour. Hard hidden veterans, hard, man. Right there. But almost famous, right? Okay. Because they never reached that plateau, right? 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 But they was almost ugh, right Sean there. Sean Jones, Sean, all of those. Mm-hmm. You know, people who've been on large comedy tours. Right. You know, Tony, Marcus Cone, mm-hmm. Tony Tone, all Boy, of those. But 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 just ain't, ain't didn't you know? But but funny as a mug. Funny as a mug. Funny as a mug. And then okay. the Memphis Kings of Comedy, uh, with, of course, again another Prescott led show. Prescott. But with all of you guys, right. you know. Now, actually, I was working on uh, at the casino. I got another casino that, that I'm in communication with. But Fitzgerald is my, my baby. Right, right, uh, right. We were working on the uh, Memphis Queens of Comedy. Uh, and, and Bob Acious was going to be the, the uh, host of that. Okay, that's good. Yeah. That's good. Okay, so uh, before we get out of time, man, let everybody, before you get into this, uh, go and do the extreme clean. That's another no. business. <laughs> Oh, let, let me let me let me let me address that real quick. So, don't be afraid <laughs> to dream. Yeah. All right. 
Uh, too many black people let people suppress their dreams. You got dream killers. You might be in your house. You know what I'm saying? Whatever it is. You might know, be your spouse. Yeah, that's what I said. Yeah, I said she <laughs> might, might be your house. house. Might be your spouse. Uh, I, 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 I didn't have that. <laughs> she didn't always agree with what I was doing. Right, right, right. Dream killer. And I ain't type guy that's going to let nobody step on my shoes. And you're going to do it in, goddamn. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but, uh, but I will say this. Don't be afraid to dream. Plan first. Don't just jump your ass out there, quit your job, and now you got to go find another job. You know what I'm saying? Let that job facilitate your dream. Mm. Okay? Yeah, it's, right. it, let it pay for your dreams. You, you'll be more happy about it, and then you'll respect it more because you got to put in that work. But if you jump out there and it don't work, you'll probably jump off your dream because you didn't plan it right. right. You know what I'm saying? So, uh, so when COVID hit, I was heavy in my construction, mm -hmm. and all of us took a hit. Yes, Everybody was we like, did. man, what, what's, you know, yes, what's going did. on? So <laughs> I was sitting there, and, uh, you know, I'm one, man, look, whatever change I got, I'm going to make this change pay for that over there. And I came up with this sanitizing and disinfecting, and, and this is it. It's called uh, Extreme Clean. Mm -hmm. and, and so what we do, we sanitize and disinfect. Right now we're running a special for the holidays, uh, three bedrooms for 175 and five bed up to five bedrooms for 275 and that includes your vehicles and your garage. Uh, now let me give you a comparison to that. Uh, our normal is about $300, mm -hmm. okay? Uh, we do restaurants, daycare centers. We've been doing those. We do churches. Uh, I've got a factory that we do down in Arkansas. Uh, I've done a small hotel, uh, things like that. So, you know, I'm going to leave this stuff with Ambrose. I, he can put it on his site, but this is black-owned, but it's professional. www.v extreme x t r e e m clean k l e e n dot com and and what does this specifically do what do you come in and do what does the uh clean what does this get rid of so what we do we come in uh it, it kills all viruses and germs bacteria bacteria okay now this doesn't kill mold we had a situation somebody called us about some mold it doesn't kill mold. No, it's a different kill product mold. yes it does yes okay, it does okay. you, you need alcohol or ammonia you got to break that up but alcohol or ammonia, and then they've got other stuff that's specific to it. You ain't got to pay for all that. Go get you some alcohol, uh, cut it with ammonia, spray it on there, scrub it off, and, and it'll be gone. Let it dry. Okay. But as far as this, what we do, uh, Ambrose, and good question, we use uh, a, a, a specific disinfectant from the for the home, uh, and then we use alcohol, 100, well, it's 99.9% alcohol, which is what they use in the hospitals. It's what's called medical-grade alcohol. Okay. It's, it's biodegradable. It's, it's, it's eco-friendly, okay. uh, which is one of the reasons why we use it, too. The CDC recommends it. Okay. Uh, so we're able, like, let's say, for instance, you say, hey, Chuck, come here. I need my spot. We can come in with this, this alcohol in our, in our fogger or our mister. We can spray this whole room, table, chairs, not the computer, uh, anything that's touched. We can do your, your cloth your ch uh, chairs, your trash, your, your uh, refrigerator, everything in here except mm -hmm. your computer. We have another device, which is a, a electro electrostatic wand, UV wand, that we use for your electronics. Okay, uh, so you disinfect the electronics also. Mm -hmm. And how long does this process last when you come in and do it? How long is it good for? Uh, it's really good for it's, it's until it's contaminated again. So okay. let's say, for example, all right, uh, we've got one company, whenever they have a meeting in, this, in their uh, conference room, they have us come in and treat that conference room. So it's good for that time. So it's, it, you can come in here and you, you're fine. But once a congregation comes in again, mm -hmm. you got to do it like, you know, we do chuckles. Y'all do a cleaning. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay. So you got to come, not a clean, it's a sanitizer. Sanitizer. Two okay. different things. So somebody called me one day, well, I'm needing my house clean. We only we do don't sanitize. Clean house. No, we don't. Clean house. <laughs> there you go. Get I, your I, I got somebody I can recommend. Get you a housekeeper for that. Yeah, okay, so uh, let them know your uh, personal contact info. You uh, on all your business contact info. Um, so so the easiest way to contact me uh, is like for Extreme Clean. It's 901-502-9988. Uh, and then um, for and the, for the construction company, I have a different number. But if you call me on that number, it's still the same thing. Pascal Construction. We do everything except new builds. If you need a room enclosed, uh, open up a wall. I got, you know, there, there are different demonstrations on the site that you can see. Uh, same thing on the, uh, on the Extreme Clean. We've got some actual video footage of us uh, doing some sanitizing on this. Which That's on Facebook? Yeah. But What's it, your Facebook name? 
uh, extreme clean you want to get it away? Oh, okay. Not, Not your what? personal, but your your business. I, I can't handle my friends no way. They they all booked up. Okay, you on Instagram also? Yep, Charlton Hilton. Charlton Hilton. Okay, let me uh, promote my business. Uh, this is my uh, comedy special. Uh, say it loud. This is my fourth one, by the way. All different material. Mm. Uh, it's all on a, different. Uh, it's on a one gigabyte USB drive. Uh, it's 15 minutes of stand up. I mean, 35 minutes of stand up, 15 minute documentary on here. Actually, I'm finna shoot an hour in January at Vivacious Club. Different material. And then, this is my herbs. You know what I'm saying? We gotta got, keep up I, with the time. I got some. Sea moss and bladder rack tincture. This is a sea moss and bladder rack soaked in 80 proof vodka for uh, six weeks. It's a tincture. You take it under your tongue. Mm -hmm. I told you the first time you swallowed it. Hey, man. It ain't gonna work like you that. You gotta go with the directions. This is a, <laughs> a tincture. You gotta put it under your tongue so your salivary gland can take it straight to your bloodstream. If you swallow, it gotta go through your digestive system. See? You get you're gonna break it down. You ain't gonna get the full effect. So you gotta take it. Under your tongue, hold it there for 90 seconds or more, and swallow the rest, and you'll be good. It boosts your immune system, boosts your libido, and it's uh, AIDS and weight loss also. Man, I actually have repeat customers, brother. I know. You actually turned Prescott on. Prescott I got did. a couple of bottles from him, man, but I we actually have... We have to have turn each other. Listen. Repeat customers. But comedianambrose.com for your herbs and for your company special. Support. Support each other out there. Black owned business. Man, man brother, I learned a lot from <laughs> your man. New, uh, new stuff. Man. Thanks for coming through, man. Uh, yeah, that was good, man. Yeah, hey, uh, I'm, I'm glad I came out. I've been waiting to come. So, <laughs> you know, every time. Hey, you know before you go, gotta get thank, thank y'all for, for tuning in. in. This, this is, is the 3811 Bus show. show. Man, appreciate that, man. <laughs> yeah, it's good.